Hello, Monica. Yeah. Anyway, we just... Okay. Okay, yeah. get started. There's so much to do and so little time to do it. I'm feeling pretty stressed. Something right now. Up, over, out, or on, Monica. Are you stressed? So what word fits in there? Stressed up. Stressed up, no. It's not that one. Up. Getting stressed now. Stressed out. Yes. So, Monica, what stresses you? Um. Uh, study proper. What? <laughs> so Monica, when are your exams this year? Do you like exams? You're a member at it. Do you like exams? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only four weeks to go. <laughs> then a big exam. Would you like me to deduct ten percent from your mark? <laughs> Thanks, <you>, Monica. <laughs> no. John. John, are you a heavy drinker? How, how teacher? Hello, John. John, are you a heavy drinker? Uh, no, I, no, no, I didn't, I didn't have the. I didn't what What does that mean? If you're a heavy drinker, what does it mean? Heavy drinker. You drink a lot of water. <laughs> Rot. No, water is. Is um is is not heavy drinking. No, so what is? A lot of what? I I think it is uh maybe the co co cola cola. <laughs> no <laughs> maybe alcohol. The beer. <laughs> That's right. So a heavy drinker is alcohol or beer or wine or things. Okay? Alcohol. Right, alcohol. That's right. Now it says um, his heavy drinking is beginning to give us cause. Which one? For at the of concern. Because <coughs> of. No. <laughs> uh, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Of. No. Because. <laughs> At, uh, at, 
Um, nope. 50-50. Uh, uh, no. There's <laughs> <laughs> four. There's four. That's yes, right. There's four. There's four. four concern. <laughs> All right. Yes. So, so stressed out. Cause four concern. Um, don't worry. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm saying it's that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, thank you. What, John? Do you do Hi. students drink a lot of alcohol in Gaozhong University? Sorry, can you say again? Is the 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 students at the university do they drink a lot of alcohol? Uh, I'm. I I drink in the when when I sing song of karaoke in Taiwan I drink a lot in Taiwan before. Yes. Not you. Yeah. Other students. Other students. Uh, I think maybe <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think All right. John, do they have parties yes. at uni? What is party? Uh, no. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the future they they have their party. Mm, do you know what a party is? Yes. Right. Do you have them at university? They have a lot in Australia. Really? Yes, really. I want to go to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. Tim. Hello, teacher. Can you see me? Hello, Tim. Tim, are those your pajamas behind you on the bed? No, that's uh, that's uh, a coat. A coat. Okay, okay I believe you. Yeah. If you can do this next one, her mother was worried when she didn't come home after school. Now, is it worried ill, wor worried groggy, worried poorly, or worried sick? You you may not know this. Don't worry. But which one would you choose? That's right. We say to be worried sick, and that means to be really worried. So worried sick means really worried. So Tim, what it, what worries you? Mm. Give me name something that worries you. Oh, uh, my project, research project. Why? Because. I'm afraid I can't finish it. Mm, true. Tim, do you know the word party? Uh, what do you mean? In political? Mm, to have a party. Do you understand? Oh, yes. I know. I know. Do they have parties at university in Taiwan? Sometimes. Sometimes, so not much. Yeah. Do do they drink alcohol? Yeah, not very much. yeah, I think I think they drink alcohol. Yeah, um, I'm just going to show you one in Australia. I'll show you one in student. Um, <laughs> so this. I put student party into Google, and this came up. Um, people from Asia love this V sign. 
don't know why, but old photographs. Now, they're drinking beer. And so note that the girl is drinking beer. So this is quite common in Australia. They, they students drink a lot of alcohol. And I think uh, probably a, a lot more alcohol than in Asia. It's quite interesting. Okay, Tim, thank you. Sean. Good morning, sir. Hello. Three nights ago, I had a terrible nightmare. And it's What's a nightmare? It means you dream, dream something bad at night. Yeah, that's right. You dream something bad. Is Lulu a nightmare? <laughs> I'm sure she's not. Now, it is being praying. Praying means. Do you know what praying means? Um. Eating something. Oh, yeah, it's concern. causing you concern. It's worrying you. Mm. So if uh, the way now, do you think it's preying on your mind, preying on your ideas, your brain, or your thoughts? I think it's preying on my mind. That's right. Now that is something you either know or don't know. But to prey on your mind means to wo to worry you, to worry you a lot. So your exams might be preying on your mind. They, you know that they're coming up and they're hard and so. Now what do you call these things in English? Worms. Do you like worms? No. Some children eat them. Oh. Yeah, we have a lot of worms in Australia. We have a lot more land than Taiwan. Thank you, Sean. Lulu. Hello, teacher. Hello. Sorry for calling you a nightmare, <laughs> Lulu. I wasn't sure, but I had a something suspicion. She wasn't telling us everything she knew. <laughs> Biting, niggling, bothering, or nibbling. Which one? Which one? The third one. No. Uh, actually, it's not the right one, but. But it's the same sort of meaning. We don't say a bothering suspicion, but a suspicion can bother you. So it's one of the other three. And I'll tell you it's not biting. So it's between those two, niggling and nibbling. Niggling. Mm, it's actually niggling, that's right. So niggling just means something bothers you a little bit. So if you had a, a pain in your, sh in your arm that keeps coming and going, that would be a niggling pain. So a niggling suspicion is you think something is wrong, but you're not sure. Now, what does nibbling mean? Biting. Yeah, so it's just um, it's having a little bit of something. So if I put this up, what's that? R rat. It's not a rat. <laughs> it's good. Do you 
know how you say that word? Squirrel. That's right, it's a squirrel. Right. Do you have squirrels in have Taiwan? Squirrels in Taiwan? Yes. Mm. We have a lot here. I've got one in the garden. This squirrel, this squirrel is holding some sort of food in its paws. And you, you know how squirrels eat, they go... That's called, that's called nibbling. So that's eating a little bit of food, just in little bits. So they nibble. So some humans nibble. So what about you? Do you, do you nibble things, Lulu? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not too good. Okay, you're not a squirrel. Thank you very much, Lulu. Thank you very much, Lulu. Amy. Thank you. Amy. Hello. What do you call this thing? What do you call this thing? Uh, do you mean do you mean the things on our body or the things on that? I mean um, both. Navel. Okay. Both. All right. Navel. No. That. Navel. And, and, they and it's also called the yeah. belly button. That's the belly that's button. a slang name, but na yeah, navel is the correct name. Now, you probably can't see from here, but I think, wait a minute, I think it's pierced. I think she's got a piercing, so she's got a little, um, she's got something in there. I think it's a piercing, but you can't see it very clearly. So she'll have a little a stud. It's called a, it's like a piece of metal, and they stick it in their belly buttons. Anyway, that's not what this picture's here for. Um, <laughs> Petra has a big something about the way she looks, and she also lacks self-confidence in many other ways. What's self-confidence? Um. Um, you feel yourself as good or yes, you are willing to present yourself. That's right. So you, you think you're very good or you you know, you you well, you may be good. Now she's got a something a hold up hold, hang up or hang. A big something. Oh, I'm sure I'm not sure. Uh hang up? Yes, that's good. Yes. Hang up. So, what do you think hang up means? What what are, what are your hang ups? <laughs> uh, I I feel worry or feel frustrated. Yeah, about what? About accounting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Do you like spiders? Spider? Yes. Do I like? Yes. Yeah. I'm not. I'm like not spiders. afraid of it. Like spiders. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's okay. Let Let me show you one in Australia. Actually, no, wait a minute. Is it poison? Yes. Um. Yes. <laughs> then I, I may be a little bit afraid of it. Yeah. These are what scare me. Wait a minute. I've got a hang up about crocodiles. I don't. This thing <laughs> is a crocodile. It's still alive. And they, they, they are. They can be about five meters long. And their jaws are huge. Um, uh, 
there. They, they eat people. Now, we describe these crocodiles as prehistoric creatures. What does prehistoric mean? It means um, it lived uh, many years ago. Yeah, did a long time ago. We're talking thousands of years. That's right. Okay, so um, in Taiwan, about um, four, three to four years ago, uh, there was a vet that lost his arm. A crocodile ate it. Do you remember? Um, I I I don't remember it. Hmm. No, he's a very unfortunate. I think they sewed it back on. But I don't know the result if it was good or bad. Anyway, so that means you've got hang-ups. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you. Now, this is about, this is a reading. It's called the business cycle. Um, I've chopped it up. The original uh, was, just let me show you the picture. Um, where are we? is going to come up, up the wrong way around, I'm afraid. I can't do anything about it. Now, you'll have to pretend this is the right way around. Um, Cindy, what's that picture of? What's that picture of? Actually, just a minute. I'll take you a proper one. I uh, don't know what's going on here. This is from PDF. It keeps turning things around. Okay, what's that picture of? Uh, the Cindy Lynn and Cindy. So I'm talking to Cindy, just above Ivy. That's right, Cindy, you. So, Cindy, what what's this thing called? Bicycle. Good. Now, does he do a lot of riding? So does this man do a lot of riding, do you think? Yes. What, how do you know? He has muscles. He has muscles, yes. <laughs> now, what does fit mean? If you're fit, what does that mean?
All right, Cindy, do you like exercise? Yes. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, play, play basketball. Okay, good. Play with the girls or the boys? Do you, are you on the girls' team or a boys' team? Uh, boys. Boys, that's good. Are you tall? No. You can still reach the basket. All right, I'll ask you another question in a minute, Cindy. So this... This text here, this reading, is talking about that picture. It says, during the past two months, about 130 business students have been competing for co company success in the Miles Bikes, sorry, the Mike's Bikes business competition. So there's teams of four and five students from Nathan and Logan campuses have formed companies to design, produce, and market bicycles in the virtual world of a multiplayer business simulation. Now, my question is, um, this is for you, Cindy. Are these students working in a real business or not? So the question is, Cindy, are these students working in a real business or not? So from this, is their business real or is it not real? Is it real no. or not real? That's right. Do you know what virtual world means? Or in virtual, what does that mean? A virtual environment. All right, Cindy, the real world is what we're in now, I think. So so you and I are in the real world, but Cindy is in Taiwan, and Nick is in Australia. So between us, there is a virtual classroom. You're in a real classroom. I'm in my office. So it's virtual. That means it exists on the computer or in cyberspace. And cyberspace is the computer. same as the internet. Do you like playing computer games, Cindy? No. No, all right. You prefer basketball. Um, but this is so these students they are they form teams of about five students and they're they're doing a multiplayer business simulation uh ivy hello teacher hi what's a business simulation do you know A business that is not real. That's right. So they're pretending. It's a pretend business. So 
Why do you think they're doing it? So these students have formed a, a virtual business, if you like, a business simulation. So why do you think they're doing it? Maybe by doing so, they can do well in the real business world. Exactly. Very good answer. So they're doing it to get skills in the real business world and for practice. So they're hoping to be able to get design, produce, and market bicycles. They're trying to sell bicycles. Ivy, have you got a bike? I don't have a bike. Okay. How do you get around? How how do you um, get around your get around Gaozhong? By bus. By bus. So you're so you're using public transport. Um, you're very green. What does that mean? You're very green. Uh, very friendly to environment. That's right. So you're you're environmentally friendly or ecologically friendly. Friendly. Anyway, back to this. So it says it's the first year the strategy game has been used in the management strategy decision making course. So a strategy is a plan. So if you have a strategy, you have a plan for doing something. Decision making is making decisions. It's how you do things. And these people are studying a Bachelor of Commerce. What is commerce, Ivy? Commercial. Yes. Basically, it's buying and selling things. So I what what course are you doing? Are you doing a commerce degree? Uh I study in information management. Okay, so information management. So you're not really doing biz selling things, but you could be make you could be involved in producing the game. So you might have something to do with the virtual world. Okay, thank you, Ivy. Thank you. Um, now, Nicholas. these students have to find yes. This is a very interesting. Uh, this um, competition. Do you have more information about it? I mean, my uh, bike. It this is competition. Yeah, it's done every year. So what? At at this yeah. University okay. of Griffiths. Um, the Griffith University in Brisbane, and there's two campuses, Nathan Campus and Logan Campus, so there's two separate. And what they do, the I think it's the thir well, they're third year commerce students. They have to join. They have no choice. They actually have to form a, a virtual company, and they have to design, produce, and market. Here they're doing bicycles. I think they vary what they do, but they're expected to basically join in and pretend uh, make you know have a business and they have to make it work and they have to do all the tasks you do in a business and they're marked on it so they're actually graded against how well they run their business so they have to strategize and scheme to win the business of bike riding cyber citizens so their job is to design a campaign that you know like is me trying to sell bikes to the people in uh, the people in Taiwan. So uh, I'm not a bike rider, but there's lots of things you can do like that. So they, this is the idea, and uh, they do this every year. So it's all about selling, selling bicycles. It's not uh, yes. recycling bicycles in campus. No, only cycling, not not recycling. Okay. I guess I, I might be able to find more information about it because this sounds interesting. Hmm. Well, the, the students quite enjoy it, I'm told. I, I got this article off the student newspaper. 
Okay. Anyway, the Thank you. course convener, he says students were able to apply the learnt in lectures to the business competition, with some of their marks being awarded for excellence in company performance. So these people, they've already done the theory of business, so they, they're now moving to practical. And this is always very useful. And I know in Taiwan, a lot of people say that that's what's missing, practical work. So this is trying to use the internet to give people practical work. And they give them marks for com excellence in company performance. I've just got something to show you, just one minute. This is my cat. <laughs> Keep him. He doesn't want to stay. <laughs> Say hello. Is this it is a she or a he? No, a he. It, it was a he. No, it's called. It's called. Bur it's a Burmese cat. <laughs> it's normally very friendly. <laughs> so that it's it's only very small. It's about three years old. Is he naughty? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's uh, he's usually very come here. He doesn't like you. <laughs> so he's very shy this today. I'd say normally it will be quite happy to, you know, look at look at you. Go say hello, horrible cat. It's got me twisted up now. He's camera shy. Uh, how old is it? Is it she or he? Look, these Burmese cats, they're, okay. they're, very, they're normally very friendly and they're a bit like dogs. But, <laughs> but is it a she or on he? The, it was a he. It's been how old is he? Three years. Okay, that's your daughter. Three, three years, and it it must have a name, Mike. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, called Pugsley. Pugsley. Because it never Pugsley. stops eating. I Pugsley. Know. Pugsley. Pugsley. Okay, what Pugsley does it in. It doesn't really mean anything, but Pugsley usually means somebody's greedy and a bit fat. Just a minute. <laughs> so. And it comes. I, I think he would. It comes from. He would protest, you know, if he knows what his name means. Oh, it never stops eating. It doesn't get big, but it, <laughs> but this this is this is called Pugsley. Pugsley. And he's a little bit fat. <laughs> Not, and yeah, and it. Yeah. So anyway, that that's what Pugsley means. Okay, was it given to you as a gift, or you bought it from a pet shop? No, it's about seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollar U.S. or Australian dollar? Aus Aus hey. Australian. So that's but how much uh, NT? Uh, I don't know. Uh, about four forty-five hundred. How many? Six. Six. Six dollars. How much I'm is sure. the exchange rate between US uh, Taiwan dollar and Australian dollar? Puxley. Okay, we know this is Puxley. So it's hundred seven hundred Australian dollar. Yes, I'm just. We don't have a dog at home, right? No, uh, I, I. You have to look after a dog, and I haven't got time. It, it can make you healthy. You have to walk him. Yeah, but you can't leave it during the day because they dig the garden up or eat you, eat your house. Yeah, some dogs do that. And no, because the, I'm the I'm away most of the day. The US okay. 
and the exchange rate. We are trying to figure out how much NT dollar I'm, it is. I'm just trying to find it. I can't find what is it? New Taiwan dollars? Yeah. One Australian dollar is okay. Huh. So the your oh, Australian dollars are really getting strong. I saw not many yeah. years ago it's only twenty four. Huh. Yes, yeah, about fourteen thousand dollars. So yeah, I know. I don't Very think my wages have gone up since we started. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's it. Right. Students like the game. Um because it's competitive and also because it's relevant. There's two reasons uh, why they like it. It's competitive and relevant. Um, Joanne. Yes. What does this mean, competitive and relevant? So they, you're talking about the game and the students like it because it's competitive and relevant. Now, what do, those, what do they mean? Can you, can you say it again? Yeah, just a minute. Um, so there's two words here. They're talking about the game, the simulated business game. They said it's competitive and relevant to the world of work. So those those are the two reasons why students like the game. So what is it? First of all. It says it's c the game is competitive. What does that mean, competitive? Um, you have to fight. Um, you have to win. The yes. You have to win against other students. So it's like running in a race. So if you win the race, that's competitive. Now it says it's relevant to the world of work they're going into. What does that mean? Relevant to the world of work they're going into. It's about the world. Yeah. They're going to yeah. learn skills yeah. which are what? So they're going to learn skills they can use in their business future. So Joanne, what what are you what are you doing at uni? What are you studying? Information management. All right. What skills do you need to do that job? Um. Yes. So what are the skills? Learn management. Good manage management skills. Um, yes. So all you have to be organized. You must have an organized mind. You must have technical or technological skills to work a computer. You have to have management skills because you have to manage IT businesses. I think if you can have all those, you're well on your way. So anyway, students here, they're doing business and they want to be working commerce. So 
this game is relevant to them because uh, is the world of commerce competitive? Yes. Joanne, do you think? Yes, very much so. Because firms are in competition. So if you have McDonald's, give me the name of another fast food chain in your country, Joanne. You've got McDonald's. What else do you have? Fast food. KFC. You have that, right. So KFC. They're in competition. So they're trying to take, you know, they're trying to get the most customers. And this sort of game can help marketing, it can help advertising, and so they're trying to sell things. So these people, these firms sell fast food and they're in competition. Okay, thank you, John. Now this fits in with the philosophy, my philosophy, so remember, it's the course lecturer talking now. My philosophy of teaching is active learning and getting students involved through activities. Cindy Lynn, hello. Good morning, teacher. Yes. Um, just to let you know, Ivy wanted to make sure that you got a question. <laughs> All right. Now, Cindy, it says. He talks about my philosophy. Philosophy here means my ideas. So he thinks something. Now he thinks that teaching should be through active learning. What does that mean, active learning, Cindy? What does active learning mean? Something energetic. That's right. You you learn something by doing. So you're not just sitting there. You actually have to join in. You have to do activities. So if you like, you're learning English by doing. So I'm I'm asking you a question, and you're trying to answer me. So you're le you're you're doing active learning. You're not sitting there listening. I'm actually making you talk, I hope. Now, do you know the opposite word to active? There's another word that means that you just sit there and listen and learn another way. So what's the opposite word to active? Begins with P. Any passive, that's right. So how do you like to learn yourself, Cindy? Do you like active learning or passive learning or both? Uh, <laughs> I think active learning is good. <laughs> mm, it is actually. Um, what do you think is the preferred way or method of learning in Taiwan? Active or passive? I think many Taiwan students are passive then so we yeah, should learn to active. Yeah, I think you're right. A lot of schools in Taiwan, I'm only, I'm only going what I'm told, but a lot of teaching in Taiwan at school is passive. They tell you things, you learn them, and then tell them back. And in Australia, it, it tends to be active. We try and get the students involved. We, we give them things, and they have to do them. We don't do them. We are called. We are a guide. So teachers are guides. 
and we do teach, but we re they call them they actually call them facil facilitation of learning. That's the, that's the what we call the buzzword. So a buzz word. What do you think that means? A buzzword. So I'm I'm saying facilitation of learning. What do you think? Why is it a buzzword? What's a buzzword? Help, help you to learning. Yeah, um, that's the meaning. But a buzzword is a word you must use to make everyone think you're clever. So a facilitation of learning. If you say facilitation, everybody thinks you're very clever. If I just say I help you with your learning, it doesn't sound as good. So facilitate means you help. You know, so a buzzword is a word that. You expect to hear, so it just is it's jargon. So jargon is is technical word. So a buzzword is is jargon. You expect to hear it. So what are you studying, Cindy? Um, I study manage management information. Yeah, management information, right? Um, what do you have to speak English? Uh, I, I want to learn the learn about the mana management of information. Yeah, and a lot a lot of information management is in English, not Mandarin. So you you have to learn your our language or my language. Okay, thank you, Cindy. I should ask Ivy another question, shouldn't I? Um all right. So this this teacher, he wants to get students involved. So this guy, Ricky Cleave, is a, a student. He hopes to be involved in a startup manufacturing company. So manufacturing is making making things. When he graduates, and the course he thinks the course was very relevant to his future plans. So this gentleman, he's a student. He wants to be involved in manufacturing, and he found this course on uh, selling bicycles very relevant. He thought it was very good. The concepts, a management strategy, were really useful. Um, Annie, what's a concept? What does that mean? Concept. New point. <laughs> um, sort of. It's it's the it's ways of thinking. So yes, it is a viewpoint. So a concept is what you think of something. Yes, it's the, it's also a viewpoint. Another word is perspective. So, so if somebody said to you, what are your perspectives on this? It means, what are your concepts? How do you think? What's your viewpoint? So Annie, are you studying IT management as well? Yes. OK. What? What? Uh, what is your viewpoint about your future? In other words, what are you going to do? Make more money. <laughs> Very good. That's that's a good answer. Everybody <laughs> wants money, so y you want you've got to be good and you've got to earn money. How about being Mrs. Gates? <laughs> yes, I would like to. <laughs> Yeah, too late. He's taken. <laughs> All right. Like 
filled them in. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> now, so this course integrates. <laughs> All right. Um, this course integrates. Integrates means make put together. So it integrates the knowledge students have gained through their degree, ma management, marketing, accounting, and products. So all those things go together: management, accounting production management, marketing. So all those things are put together in this course. It's quite useful to them. Uh, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I'll ask you again in a minute. I thought there was another one. Just a second. Um, nope, that's all there is. So it's not a very long article. But it's basically, it doesn't tell us anything about the game. It just says it's a marketing game. It's, uh, they sell bicycles online and it, pro it provides students for you know, with uh, skills for their future job. Right, uh, just a minute, where is he hiding? Mike. Hello. Hi. Name an older female film Name star you like. Uh... <laughs> Uh, Mary Stripe. Who? Uh, no, not as kind, not as kind. Uh, and uh, I'll I'll look out first. All right. He must be in English. He must be in English. Sure. All right, um, Jocelyn, while that gentleman is looking up his film star, what is matchmaking? So, Jocelyn, what is matchmaking? Two people um, help help them to be together. That's right. Um, in Australia, we call it arranged marriage. Um, It's quite common in some countries. Meryl Streep, actually, yes, she's a. I haven't heard of her for several years now, but Meryl Streep is a well-known film star. Uh, not, I'm surprised you know that actually. Um, but so that's Meryl Streep, and she is a very well-known Hollywood, well Hollywood actress. She's won several Oscars. Yeah, so she's quite cool. Yeah, yeah, she's a good actress. Yeah, a good she actress. she has a a, a, range has a, a range of parts. She's able to move through to move voices, through and, different voices and different genres. A genre is a subject. So different genres of film. So she can be like The Devil Wears Prada is a comedy. She's also been in several. Um, films which have won Oscars which tend to be action films or drama for is probably a better name. Do you watch films a lot, Mike? Yeah, I watch a lot of films. Any in kind English of or in Mandarin? In English or in Mandarin? English. That's good. Do you have subtitles? Do you have subtitles? Um, yeah, but sometimes I'll just Cover the subtitles. Just don't find Oh, that's good. That's one way of learning English, actually. To use subtitles. All right. Um, that's enough about your older women. Leonard. Just 
Mr. Lin? Yes, do so. Shall we have a break? All right, Leonard, 10 minutes, right. and then I'll ask you a question. Okay. Is that okay, Pearl? 10 minute break? Okay. Oh, Leonard, are you there? Yes, sir. Right. Read that and explain it to me in your own words. Excuse me, sir. We need this and explain what it means in your words. Eight from ten people who read the word yawn or see yawning fill the earth to yawn. Now your words. What does it mean? In my words. Mm. In your words. People who see this picture will will have the <laughs> feeling to. Yes. Uh, people who see the, this picture will feel. Would like to yawn. Yeah, that's right. 80% of people who read this word or see yawning yawn. Have you yawned? Mm, no. <laughs> Why do we yawn? Because we feel sleepy. Yes, um, apparently, but. Why we yawn, nobody knows, but we yawn. Right. Mm. Ray. Not there. Um... Ellen, sorry, yeah, a Ellen, tell me in your words what this picture shows. Uh, uh, the sk uh, skin, the Moat. Huh? Yes, <laughs> moat. Moat is uh, pet. Is animals. Uh -huh. So it's 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 um a fur coat. So a ca a cat will moat. My cat's moated all over me just now. But uh, but yes, uh, sheds is like moats. But uh, sheds means um. What's another word? Um, flakes, flakes off, something like that. But yes, all right. So the average human molts. Go on. Yes. What do they? What, what do they molt? Sorry, teacher, can you repeat again? Yeah. yeah. Just a minute, I'm looking. All right, shedding. Um, Nicholas. That's quite interesting. That's yes. Interesting. Can you read that again? Moat? M O U L T? How do you read uh, it? How do you say it? I read it as moat. Moat. Okay. Yeah. Mold. And I'm just looking up the spelling because I'm just wondering. I think it's U L T. Now it can also be M O. So M O U L M O L T is also acceptable. 
All right. The word know. instead. Yeah. Okay. Do dogs is sloughing. Know? Yes, they do. Okay. They they molt hair. Uh, you can also molt your skin. Like a snake. Okay. Okay. Um, the other word, yeah, the other word that is good is um, I just lost it again. Wait a minute. Um, shed. So the other word that you could use, Alan, is shedding skin. That means putting skin out. This it, oh, <laughs> it's what we used already. Just a minute. I had another word. I I think it seems shedding is a more common word. It's more common. It is for humans. Than most. It's for human, okay. And for, for, Mo for most animals, is animal. it's most. Yeah. Okay. So this. This is shedding its skin or molting. So this is some sort of. Um, I think it's some sort of lizard, and it it's shedding its skin or it's molting. So the skin is falling off. Um, uh, uh, you, you could say that the skin is peeling off, I suppose. It's actually interesting because there isn't really much in the way of an alternative. So, why do you shed skin, out, Alan? Why do you shed skin? What's the reason? So Ellen, why do we Eleanor, why do we shed skin? Mm. Hi. Because mm, all cell will be old and we have to That's right. We have dead skin. We have dead skin. And so it sheds away. And we get new skin underneath. Okay? Uh, yes, and you're right, Bob. If the weather's dry, we shed more skin. Right. Eleanor. Uh, sorry. Elisa. Yes? Do you shed skin? <laughs> yes. No, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no, not always. Where is, all right. Where is the largest amount of dead skin on your body? The question, uh, where is the largest amount of dead skin on your body? And hand and leg and foot. Yes, not the yeah, yeah, you're right actually. The hands there's mm. more <laughs> on your feet. <laughs> so this, now so all all this you can't see very well but all this is dead skin. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. what do you call what do you call this part of the foot? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, the, um, the, uh, hmm? yeah, this, this is the foot. But what's the bottom of the foot called? 
Yeah, that's right. Soul. Soul. So it's the soul of the foot. Now, if I say, do you have a soul? Read the read the question. What does that mean? Do you have a soul? Y yes. All right. What is it? Uh, spirit. <laughs> yes. Spirit will do. Now we've got soul, which is spirit. We've got soul, which is the bottom of your foot. What's the other meaning of soul? The only or unique? Not unique will do. Uh, no, not really. It means one. Uh. One of something. So you could say, uh, you are the sole girl in this class talking at the moment. Uh. So or we sometimes talk about a sole trader. That means somebody who sells, a sole mm -hmm. trader of um, oh, apples. So he's the only one that sells apples in that area. So a soul is one one person who does something. So we don't use it very much, but there there are three meanings. So two of soul and one of soul. Okay. All right, Lisa. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Now we're going to do uh, a listening. Oh, just a minute. Now, uh, just, just a minute. Now we have got. Can you click continue and then stop, please, uh, Wendy or uh, Sylvia? You should be able to see number of questions. Just a minute. I haven't taken a picture, which is a nuisance. Now, there are. Two minutes going back to go. Right, there are a number of questions here. So I'm going to give them to people. So the first one will be Coco. Can you do the first one, please? It says, if there's enough bricks for five houses, why did they scrap mm -hmm. three houses instead of two? All right. So that's for Coco. Okay. Uh, Bob? Number yeah. two, what, what's the definition of deferred consumption given in this text? Uh, so, uh, okay. so when you when you listen, you try, try and tell me. Claire, what is the plural of the word stuff used in the text? Okay. Yes. And I want you, I want you to tell me. Why, you know, what, uh, well, I'll ask you a question about the type of plural it means, okay? Johnny, next one. So, this is Johnny. What do the bank do if people start taking out too many loans, okay? Dave? Okay. What is the interest rate dependent on? Okay. Uh, right. Teacher, I better not do that. Martin? What is the potential problem of printing too much money? Okay. Uh, Pano. Okay. What's the speaker's opinion of the U.S. government's proposal to print more money? All right. So right at the end, that is. You have to listen. And then Luke, can you do the last one? Um, it says, "What's the final definition of the business cycle given in this text?" Means this this listening. Okay. Well, that would be Luke. You have to look carefully. All right. Um, now let me put the. Would you like to start that when you're ready, please, uh, TA? What is the business
Okay. Okay, Coco. If they are enough bricks Hello. for five houses, why did they scrap three houses instead of two? Because it is unrecoverable. 
that's right. So some bricks are damaged. Some of the bricks can't be recovered. They're, they're damaged too badly. So. Coco, do you want to work in business? Coco, do you want to work in business eventually? No. No. What are you? Are you IT management? So, Coco, what course are you doing? Nice. Okay, same as all the others. <laughs> Thank you, Coco. Coco, why did you choose the name Coco? Um, um, my my senior high school friend. Called there is me a very Coco. famous yeah, Coco. Did she? There's a very famous lady who in the West was called Coco Chanel. Mm -hmm. I know. And she used to make <laughs> perfume, you know, well, that's her. So she's considered, if you put glasses on and you've got you. But she, she was, uh, she's gone, she's dead now, but uh, she was considered very elegant and smelled nice because she used to make perfume. And in order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different. So that's that's your motto. Thank you, Coco. All right, Bob. Let's let go to the next question. Um, hey. Hey, sorry, can't find it. Okay. So, what's deferred consumption? Uh, saving. Saving Good. Now, what does deferred mean? What does deferred mean? Give me another word. Deferred means... means uh, um, Let me think. So what, what does this word mean? Same thing. So what's... What's that word? Say it and tell me what it means and don't say deferred. Oh, I see. Yes. So what's consumption then, Bob? What does consumption mean? Give me another word for that. Consumption means you buy something. Huh? Yeah, but we're talking about savings here. All right, that's right. You buy something and use it. So if you like mm. it, deferred consumption is postponed usage or postponed use. So in other words, you're saving instead of buying. Oh, and why they call it deferred consumption, I've got no idea. But it means, as you said, it means savings. So deferred means postponed. We'll do it later. So savings. Thank you, Bob. Claire. Hi, teacher. Hello. What's the plural of stuff? It's already plural. Good. Give me another example of a plural word. So you've got stuff. There's another one. It, begi the, it begins with in. In for what? Information. A lot of a lot of Asians they love saying I have a lot of stuff or I have a lot of informations. We don't say that. We say information and stuff. Another one. I'm going to. I'll say data. That's the way I say data. That this this is a plural word. 
sometimes we say the data is correct. Some people say the data are correct. Um, if you want to be grammatically correct, it should be the data are correct because the singular of this word is datum, it's Latin. So, but we don't, or very rarely say datum, but we say data. And is or are are both acceptable. But here the information is correct, the stuff is available. Now, there is an expression, a slang expression, I am stuffed. What does that mean, I am stuffed? Claire? How do you feel if you're stuffed? Eat too much. Yeah, that's one way. So I'm stuffed after eating. Now, Claire, if you ran uh, 20 kilometers, how would you feel? I will be tired. Yeah, very, very tired, very, very unless you're a runner. We also say, we also I, feel I feel stuffed. I'm very tired. I'm very tired. So, stuffed, so the, the verb to stuff. There's also a stuffed toy. What's that? What's a stuffed toy? A teddy bear. Yeah, that's right. So that's another meaning of stuffed, um, and like a teddy bear, as you say. So that's a teddy bear. Now there is also another one, um, a stuffed animal, which is not a, uh, actually a stuffed. Um, uh, it means that you. F <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? If you stuff an animal, it means um, that you make an animal, uh, You after an animal's death, you stuff it. So, I'm not going to win this one. Wait a minute. Um, oh, here we are. Um, so, sometime, another word for stuff is a real animal is stuffed. So what's that animal? And don't say tiger, it's not a tiger. So what is it? it begins with C H. Tenzinar. Cheetah. That's right. I think it's a cheetah. And is it a real cheetah? No. Yes, but it's stuffed. It's dead and stuffed. Nicholas. Nicholas. Yes. What's the difference between a cheetah and a leopard? Only in size or shape? Um, no, they're a different. They're a different type of uh, of animal. Uh, they're both big cat. We call them big cats. Uh, but the cheetah is renowned for its running. I think it's. I think it's the one of the fastest li fastest things on earth. The leopard is. Uh, if you look at the spots on this. Um, I've just got one here, just a minute. So these spots, if you look at a leopard, the spots are different. And... Yeah, 
I, I guess I understand because I, I, I remember that cheetah's head is shaped uh, to run. Yeah. And not leopard. Well, this, that's the cheetah and it's thinner. And that's the leopard, I think. Is that right? Uh, yeah. And it says, what's the difference? And I'm just looking it up now, actually. I have no idea. They're both what we call big cats. That's the, they both belong to the, and the difference I is that. I think usually, usually leopard is uh, uh, bigger than cheetah. Yeah. Well, it says, um, this is, that says, it won't let. It says that it's all in the spots. Cheetahs have simple black spots, whereas leopards have a more complex pattern. So, so the leopard has just got black spots, whereas the cheetah it has a more com uh, sorry the leopard has a more complex pattern. So, so they say. It's interesting. All right, both of them will eat you if they get the chance. So it's not a good idea to meet them. All right, anyway, sorry, I've got a thing about that skin. Um, okay, so the, and as you said, so stuff is a plus word. Thank you very much, Claire. You know all about stuffing now. Thank you. Johnny. Yes. What do the bank do if people take, start taking out too many loans? They will not to <laughs> oh. so what do they do? Red uh, interest rate. <laughs> what is the interest rate? What does that mean? Mm, when people take take lo take loans and they will pay mm, extra money. <laughs> yeah, they pay extra money, exactly. So the interest rate, we can say the interest rate is killing. That means, it's, is that high or low? So a killing interest rate, high or low? High. So a high interest rate is killing. That means you pay a lot of money. So you take a loan, it costs you a lot of money. So Johnny, have you had a loan yet? No. <laughs> when, what do you want one for? So eventually you'll have a loan. What do you think it will be for? Maybe a uh, one low for a new computer. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It'll be a nice one if you need. Okay, thank you, Johnny. Dave, what's the interest rate Hello. dependent on? It depends on how much people save in the bank. Hmm. Why? Mm. Uh, yeah, that's not that's not this. That's my question to you. You, I the people. Claire told me you speak excellent English, and she wants mm. me to ask you that question. So, if you save, what happens to the month? So, if everybody saves. Yes. What happens to the money supply? Go up or down? Uh, if many people say the interest rate will be lower. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think you're right. So if lots of people say the interest rate will be lower because the amount, 
the we say the money available uh, they, the banks will want to lend money because nobody's borrowing it so to make yeah. people borrow it they they decrease the interest rate if they want to stop people borrowing it they increase the interest rate so interest rate depends on savings as you say if people save that means they don't need loans yeah. So the banks will reduce the interest rate to make people to encourage people to borrow. If everybody is not saving, that means everybody wants loans. So in that case, they increase the interest rate to allow them to make money and to stop people borrowing too much. So the theory runs anyway. All right, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, um, Martin. Yes. What's the what's the potential problem of printing too much money? Uh, inflation. Yeah, tell me what inflation means. Uh, it means you uh, too much money, but uh, less things to buy. So inflation means the value of money goes down goes down yeah. what's bust bust in relation to money there is another type of bust but we better not talk about that here so what's in relation to money what's what's bust is it positive or negative Bust means you have no money. Exactly, you've got no money. What's the opposite word? So if you've got lots of money, what? And if the economy, if the economy's bust, it means you have no money. So if the economy is something else, another another word we mean would be, what's the opposite word meaning very very a lot of money? Uh, I don't know. It's called boom. So we talk about boom and bust. So a booming economy is one that's got a lot of money in it. A bust economy means no money. So bust is like bankrupt. Boom means a lot of money. So that's the opposite word. Okay? Okay. So Mar Martin, what are you? Boom or bust? Can you say that again? What are you, boom or bust? You. So your savings, are they boom or bust? Um, um, ah. All right, never mind. What's that? Yeah. It, yeah, but what what is it? It's hair. E, all right. What is all of this? If I tell you it's a bust, what does that mean? If I say this is a bust. What what's this made of? So what do you think it's made of? It's not wood. What is it? Is it wood? All right, Martin. Yes, Ma Martin said marble, which is actually correct. I was going to say stone, but marble is actually the best word. So marble, it's carved from marble, and we say it is called a bust. So a bust is a head. So a head carved from marble 
or carved from stone is called a bust. That's another meaning of bust, okay? Now, the third type of bust, I am going to show you because it is a word and it's not offensive. This is also called a bust. This is a woman's bust, woman's breast, or a woman's bust, okay? So, we get, we're not talking about woman's breast, we're talking about her bust. So, the whole thing here is called a bust. So, we say, this woman's bust is generous. It means she's well, she has large breasts. So, a bust so is, is Nicholas, this what's thing. the difference between yeah. it and the bosom? The bosom? Uh, similar, so, bosom, a bosom is, is the same thing as a bust. So her, bo but we might say her bosom is large, her bust is large, her breasts are large, or she is well endowed. Which that means they're large. Polite. Uh, the, the politest is, is uh, it depends on the tone. So, um, do you have a large bust, madam? Who would dare to ask a question like that? Uh, somebody fitting uh, for a bra. For a bra. Okay. They have to ask them their bust, their bust size. Their bust but their bust if size. You, if you said if you used a different tone and said she has a huge bust, that's being that's being um, got the lecturers. <laughs> I'll leave you to define. Lecturers means that you're being dirty. Lecturers is a defense negative word but it really depends on how you use it and how you say it all right so which one do you prefer Martin bust bust or bust the thir first second or third <laughs> let's say that one Martin then that's safe Oh, Martin's lecture city. All right. Thank you, Sylvia. Tano. Just a minute. Let me find your question. Where are we? All right. Tano, what's the speaker's opinion of the U.S. government's um, proposal to print more money? Hello, are you there? No, no, oh, he's gone. All right, there he is. Pano, can you talk? Uh, sorry, Professor, can you say again? Yeah, this question, did you get the answer? So, what did the speaker think of the US government's proposal to print more money? Was he happy with it or did he think it was very silly? So, that's what he said. He said it's crap. It's crap. It is, it is constitutional. So, crap is a slang word for for poo. So he says it's crap, it's rubbish. But he says it's still constitutional. It is allowed under the American Constitution. So under legal tender laws, do you know what this means, this word, pano, tender? Legal tender? All right, here, legal tender is money. So you do, you do have to read around. It says, under legal tender laws, a business cannot refuse to accept U.S. dollars. 
So you should be able to work out that legal tender is US dollars. So what, sa what it's saying is, under laws, a US business has to accept the dollars. They cannot refuse the money. Or, or they'll get the owner will go to prison. Nicholas, what does yeah. this, what does the yeah. word tender mean here? It's referring to money. We c we sometimes talk about money as being we, we don't we talk about legal tender. And you're talking about money. Okay, it has to do with monetary currency. So what currency. the the legal the legal currency of your country are. Taiwanese dollars, and we call that the legal tender of your country. Now we we can't say we can't say the tender of your country. We must put legal in front. So this is a phrase, legal tender. It means money. Now the word tender is different. It can mean um, uh, all right. Up Hano, can you? Are you there? I'm in. Are you a tender person? Uh, I'm afraid not. <laughs> um, if you're tender, it means you're kind. So if, if you're very tender towards your girlfriend or your boyfriend, it means you love them, it means you like them. So a tender person is one who is a pleasant person. They have a nice person, a nice loving, so if you like, they're loving, a nice loving personality. That's another one. Now we can also say a tender, uh, tender piece of meat. So if we say, <laughs> you know him, Rita. Yeah, veal, okay. veal, that's baby cow, I think. But that we say that this meat is tender. And that means it's usually positive. It means it tastes really nice and it's easy to chew. So it, the, the opposite word here is tough. So if the meat's tough, it means it's not very well cooked and it's like leather. It's hard to chew. So the meat's tender, means you like it, and so on. Uh, this looks very nice. Um, Johnny... Are you there? Yes. Um, do you know how you describe how this meat is done? Is it well done or is there another word? If, if, it's, if it's very, if it's black, we call it well done. There's another term, rare. You know what that means? Median rare. Yeah. Um, when you ask for a steak, at least in Australia, you can say one of several things. I'd like it well done. That means very, you know, cooked to almost black. You can have it charcoal if you want. That means basically it's it, it's made it's it's literally burnt. Well done. Then there's there's rare which means still pink in the middle, then there's medium rare, which is probably this one. So medium rare is where you've got brown, you know, it's well done on the outside, but pink in the middle. And that's, and rare, medium rare is tender to me. Some people like well done, I like medium rare steaks. Rare, some people say rare, uh, or very rare, is uh, the cow is still mooing. So in other words, you've just killed it, and it's it's really rare. It's hardly cooked at all. So most people don't like it rare. Some people will do. Um, okay, I think that's enough on tender. And then the last question, uh, find it. Uh all right, I've already answered this question for you now, um, Luke.
So Luke, what is yeah. a boom and bust cycle? Uh, I put up the wrong the picture. So economic activities. Yeah, that's Including right, up and down. Uh, so that would be boom, that would be bust. Now, give me an example of a country in Africa where this print money policy has created massive inflation. The, the, the country begins with Z. And it's, it's a place where the, they've got inflation of about 400% a year. Zimbabwe. Good. Zimbabwe. Uh, Zimbabwe used to be a very prosperous country. Prosperous means rich. It was a, con it was a prosperous country. It used to be called the uh, bread basket of Africa because it produced or it had it grew wheat, it grew corn and it grew crops and it supplied the whole of Africa. Then when the Robert Mugabe is the current prime minister uh, Mugabe and he is a despot. That means a a a total dictator. Um, he's a bit like uh, North Korea. If you disagree with him, um, Kim Jong Il will kill you, and so will Robert Mugabe. And he, his policies have caused massive inflation in Zimbabwe. In fact, many countries in in uh, Africa have this problem, but in particular that. Okay, uh, thank you, Luke. Can we have another short break and come back in a few minutes, Bill? Sure. Okay. Okay. Shall we go on? Right. Um, Alan. Kabla Lien, how are you? Alan? Hello. Hello. Alan, read this and explain the picture in your own words and why. Out loud. Tail home shows in Uganda and Kenya are much higher to allow for the height of gear the rest. Yeah. So why are telephones high in Uganda? In Kenya. Mm, maybe because they are afraid that the rest will <laughs> buy the <laughs> the telephone poles. Yeah, that's right. Wire. You might hit the telephone. So they have to be able to walk underneath them. If they hit them, so if they hit the telephone poles, what will happen? Mm, they might be dead because of the electricity. That's right. They might be dead. I, I don't know why all these birds are there, but these are giraffes and they're eating from the trees. What do they call this part of the giraffe? Mm, it's, it's neck. Yeah, that's right. So how long is it? So how long is it? Mm, maybe one meter. Three meters. Three meters. Ooh. They have long necks. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Alan. Right, Carlos. I hear you're hiding. Where are you? Yeah. No, I Carlos? always get disconnected. I don't know why. I don't believe you. You don't try hard enough. Carlos, say this number yes. for me. If you can. Uh, 
2,598,960. Very good. Very impressed, actually, because a lot of people struggle to say numbers in English. Now, tell me what this means. Uh, it means there are a lot of possible uh, combinations in Good. a five-card poker game. Good. So what's poker? Uh, a poker is like a gamble. Oh yeah, that's gambling. So five-card poker yeah. uses five cards, and as you say, this would be called a hand. So the hand is what you have in your hand when you're holding the cards. Do you know the name of these things? Those are chips. Good, they're called chips. Do you gamble? No. <laughs> you know all these names. Uh, because I or learned how to do it, but I don't do it. Uh, gamble. Don't do it. No, it's a good idea. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Bob, Bob. Yes? Can you do this one? Read it to me and tell me what it means. Oh, out. Uh, may I read the it? Yes, I want you to. Uh, be because of a uh, reflex action, uh, a uh, red hot snake can bite you up to an hour after it's dead. Right. So we've got a dead rattlesnake. What's the problem with it? Wow. Uh, wow. It can bite you, but it after it is dead. Yes. What does that mean, a reflex action? <laughs> reflex action is an action, but it didn't throw your burn. Hey. Yes, um, but I, uh, I'm a, a, a reflex is something uh, you have no control. So uh, if I uh, if I took a a cigarette and put it on your hand, what would you do, oh. Alan? So if I took a cigarette and put it on your hand, what would you do? Sorry, Bob. What? Yes. What would you do? So I put a cigarette on your hand. What would you do? Oh, uh, I will feel. Uh, you pull away. It's oh. hot. You burn. Oh, so that's away. called a reflex. <laughs> Yeah, that's called a reflex, okay? So here, yes. the rattlesnake's okay. dead, but a reflex goes on after it's dead, so for one hour. Yeah. Do you think this rattlesnake is dead or not? Hmm. I think I don't know it's dead. <laughs> I think he's probably alive because his tongue is sticking out. And you see, you see oh. this at the end here. This white, this we call that a forked tongue. So like a fork, two prongs. So a fork, and that's what it stings you with. But the fact he's got its um, its uh, tongue out and also its tails up, it's probably alive. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter. All right, thank you. Karina. Hi. 
Hello, Karina, can you do this one? If you have at least... We say five eighths. Five A of a torn dollar bill. It can be... Redeemed. Redeemed for full value. What do you think that means? What does it mean? What does it mean? Uh, it means it also ca uh, I also can have the new mon uh, the full mo full value of that money. That's good. So if you've only got this bit got and that's lost, redeem means you can go to the bank and they will give you another another dollar in its place. So yes, you're right. Okay, thank you. Can I have the token back, please? Sorry, it just threw me out just then. Wendy, can I have them back, please? Thank you. Right, um, I was just about to ask somebody, wait a minute. Uh, where are Rita, are you there? Hello, teacher. Hello, Rita. Rita, can you do that one? Sorry, you have... Uh, very, very... Oh, is yes, that better? Can you hear me, Rita? Yeah, on. Yes, yes. Okay. Go on. Glass gets stronger the longer it is underwater, the only substance to do so. Yes, known substance. So, what's it saying? It says the glass is very stronger and the, a, a girl can stand on it and it, mm. it will broken. Yeah. Is glass the only substance that does this or are there other substances? This is unique to glass. So only glass does this. If you put it under water, the stronger you leave it there, sorry, the longer you leave it there, it gets stronger. Nobody knows why, it just does. It's quite interesting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I was I did have some other names there. I've lost them, Pearl. Um David, what's this?
Yes. What's this? I don't know, like, anymore. Well, yeah, but Pepper. read this and tell me what this is. So I, wa I want to know what the animal is and what this word means. I maybe know what this is, but I I don't know how to say in English. No, that's why. All right. Well, that's why the picture. Is she called an armadillo? What he's doing in a house? That is an anteater. I think it eats ants, as far as I remember. Anyway, he says it can be housebroken. What does that mean? What can it be taught? not to do. Are you Freak. housebroken? If you have a pet that's housebroken, what does it mean? Yes. It's, I think it means um. It, it can be toilet trained. Yes, good. It can be toilet trained. In other words, it, it doesn't go to the toilet in the house. It goes outside. Most, most, most of you are probably toilet trained by now. You can control, your, you can t control when you want to go to the toilet. And apparently you can teach an armadillo. I don't know how anybody would catch an armadillo and train it, but you can make it go to the toilet outside, which is probably a good thing. Okay. All right. I think we might stop there. Is that okay, Pearl? Okay. All right. So see you next week. Okay. All right. Good night. Good afternoon.